Hey there, and welcome to Sprouting Spoon's online cooking class. Today we're going to be making chicken piccata pasta. It's a lovely chicken and lemon dish with lots of capers, and we know you're going to enjoy it. For this dish, you're going to need two chicken breasts, about a quarter cup of uh, Italian parsley, enough flour to dredge your chicken, two cloves of garlic, the juice of half a lemon, a quarter cup of dry white wine, about two tablespoons of capers drained from their juice, a quarter cup of chicken stock, enough pasta to feed uh, two to four people depending on how hungry your family is, and one half of a shallot. So we're going to start by cooking our pasta. Just like it would say on the box, we're going to boil it for about eight to ten minutes or until it's al dente or just a little bit to the tooth. And then we're going to strain it off and let it chill out while we prepare the rest of the dish. You are going to want to keep about a quarter cup of the pasta water when it's done. So we're going to start by mincing our shallot. We're going to take off the top end and the root end and then slice it in half because we are only going to be using half of it. Remove the paper. And we're going to do a couple quick slices this way. And then just slice it nice and thin this way. So it's very, very thin. We can just transfer that over into a bowl for later. And then we're going to mince up our two cloves of garlic. We're going to start by removing the paper so we set our knife on top and give it a nice little tap. And that helps release all of the skin, like so. And just like we did to the shallot, we're going to give it a couple slices each way. And then we get nice little minces. It's okay if you have some large pieces. It all goes in the same spot. It'll give it a little bit more of a rustic feel. A little paper. And then that can go and join the shallot for later. Then we're going to mince up our parsley. So for our parsley, we're going to not really worry about any of these larger stems that are in here. As long as they're not the very end woody pieces, we don't really care. We're just going to give it a nice little slice up, keep it in a little bundle, and we're going to give it a little turn so all of the slices go the opposite way. We can run our knife on it a couple more times just so we don't have any large pieces. And then this will be saved until the very, very end, and we'll go ahead and work on our chicken next. So next we're going to work on our chicken, and for this we're going to use a trusty kitchen mallet. If you don't happen to have one of these, you can use a heavy pan or perhaps a rolling pin with some parchment over it or anything like that. You just need something heavy that you can get a, work out some of that frustration. So we're going to take our chicken breast and we're going to start by slicing it in half. You want to make sure that their pieces are kind of even, but if you're going to skew on one side, make the short end a little make the smaller end a little bit longer because it's a little thinner to begin with. Then we're going to take our chicken mallet and we're just going to give it some nice taps. You're not looking to really, really beat it up because you don't want it to just spl spray and splatter all over. You just want a nice like pound and pull a little to get it a nice even flat piece so that everything cooks about the same. This is also going to help it ensure that it's nice and tender. We're going to get the other side, just a few pounds. So you can see that they're about the same thickness now, and that's what you're really looking for. So after your chicken is nice and pounded out, we're going to go ahead and season it fairly liberally with salt and pepper. Never skimp on the seasonings. And after this, we're going to go ahead and dredge it in our flour. So you're going to need a nice, uh, a nice bowl that you can dump out the flour. I like this pasta plate with some higher edges because it gives me some room to work around with. We're just going to go ahead and take our chicken and dip it in. 
and what we call dredge, which means you give it a nice light coating and shake off the extra. After this, we're going to go ahead and fry it up really quick. And the rest of the dish comes together very quickly. So when your chicken is all dredged, we're going to put a pan over medium, medium high heat uh, that has just enough uh, plain neutral oil in the bottom so that it gets nice and hot and our chicken doesn't stick. So once it's hot, you'll see a few uh, little tufts of just a light smoke and you'll see little ripples in the bottom of the pan. And then you'll just go ahead and put our chicken in, uh, maybe two uh, pieces with how small this pan is. And you're going to let it cook and brown so it doesn't stick to the bottom. Uh, you'll notice that the chicken will start to cha uh, change to a whitish color about halfway up. When that happens, go ahead and flip it over and cook it the rest of the way through, and it should be nice and brown on both sides. Go ahead and repeat with all the pieces. So after about two to three minutes, we're going to go ahead and flip it. You'll see this nice, beautiful brown color that we're starting to develop, and that the chicken is mostly cooked all the way through. We're going to flip it over for another two, min two to three minutes, just to make sure it's fully cooked, and then we'll continue with our other two. So after your chicken comes out, you'll see you have all this lovely little brown stickins to the pan, which is where a lot of the flavor for our pan sauce is going to be. So we're going to add in our onions, and I'm sorry, our shallot, and our garlic, and get, let that uh, cook for a little bit until it just gets nice and soft. We're going to scrape around at the bottom to try to pull up some of that extra delicious flavor that we have there. After about a minute or so, you'll be done with your onions. It'll be nice and soft. So then we're going to go ahead and add in our capers and our dry white wine. And that'll help get up some of those uh, pan drippings. If you don't happen to have white wine or if you don't like it or don't want to use it for whatever reason, you can go ahead and just add a little bit more chicken stock to the recipe and it'll be just fine. And once those um, pieces have come up, like so, you can add in the rest of your chicken stock or liquids other than the, uh, the reserved liquid from your pasta. And we're going to go ahead and let this simmer and reduce by half. So once you're reduced by half, we're going to go ahead and add in the juice of half a lemon. If you don't like it as tart, you don't have to add in as much. And then we're going to go ahead and toss in our cooked pasta. and let that kind of sop up together. We reserve the extra pasta sauce, uh, water, I should say, not sauce or juice, um, so that we can thin this out a little bit if we need to, make sure everything gets coated. We're just gonna add a little splash. I wouldn't add it all right away. Once this tosses all together, we can go ahead and add in our parsley. Nice coat. And then we're ready for it to meet the chicken and become super delicious. That is on the plate. So once they're, it's all mixed up, we're gonna let our pasta and our chicken become friends on the plate. Uh, you can just smell all the brine from the, the capers, which are close to olives in a way. I'm just gonna add our chicken right on top. Look how delightful that is. You could add a little extra parsley if you wanted, but we're gonna just go ahead and dig on in. Oh. It just smells so delicious. We'll twirl this pasta. And the star of the dish is probably the chicken. One big old bite. Mm. It is so good. You get the salty chicken flavors. It is so fabulous. A little bit of lemon. I think people of all ages are going to love this. So thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.